Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I think everyone is safe and good. My student, uh, in our last class, we are studying, <clears throat> you know, um, boiler, different types of boiler, boiler operation, and uh, different auxiliary component of boiler. That means boiler mountings, boiler accessories. And we also saw in the last previous two classes that uh, in a steam power plant, there is a cycle going on. That means uh, the cycle moves from, you know, boiler to turbine, turbine to compress uh, condenser, then condenser to pump, and then pump to, uh, you know, boil again. So this cycle is basically known as, you know, steam cycle or Rankin cycle. Rankin cycle, that means the cycle that follows, you know, throughout the whole uh, steam power plant. So in mechanical, engineering there are four parameters that uh, we basically you know um, compare one is remember one is pressure one is volume one is temperature another one is heat another one is heat okay so basically the comparison between these uh, these parameters are basically defined into different cycles here you can see the ranking cycle the ranking cycle is basically nothing but the you know comparison or the change during the whole four steps uh, of pressure and volume they basically you know compare pressure and volume together and temperature and heat together so there are two types of diagram one is known as pv diagram because that diagram shows us you know pressure and volume change Another one is TS diagram. That diagram shows us temperature or heat change during the four steps. Okay, so it is basically the generic diagram. Not the exact diagram, but the generic diagram, you know, just you can get a, you know, a small idea about how the value basically changes over the section, different parts or different process. This value, the pressure and volume value, over the four you know different stages it changes so these two the pv diagram and ts diagram is basically known as the ranking cycle we will discuss later in the class also the pv diagram and the ts diagram where pv the pressure and volume has a you know relation and they compare the relation between pressure and volume and the temperature and heat we all know and the temperature and heat is to, uh, you know inverse uh, you know related together and also the pressure and volume they are also you know related together uh, so these two diagram are basically known as ranking cycle in the steam power plant so before going there on before going there we need to know some of the uh, you know uh, some of the terms of mechanical engineering, just like we have our voltage, um, you know, uh, current, power, energy, these are the electrical engineering terms. So there are some mechanical engineering terms also we need to also know. These are the thermodynamics terms. Uh, so uh, this, the, you know, the first term is enthalpy. Okay, the first th term is enthalpy. Enthalpy is, you know, known as total heat of a system. If you, you know, consider a system and if you want to calculate the total heat of their system, the total heat of their system we can represent by enthalpy. It is the, you know, the alternative name. The enthalpy is equals to total heat of a system. And we represent enthalpy by H. We represent enthalpy by H. The total heat of a system the second one is also you know related to heat that is entropy one is enthalpy that is total heat of a system this the second one is entropy so what is entropy it is also a kind of heat but you can see that uh, you know that the heat the unit of heat is joule the unit of heat is joule okay but uh, the entropy unit is joule per kelvin joule per kelvin 
and that means uh, it is also he heat but it's a different heat how that uh, if you want to increase the temperature of a system of one degree kelvin if you want to increase the temperature of a system of one degree kelvin then the amount of heat that is required that is entropy you see that the joule per kelvin that means if you want to increase one kelvin temperature if you want to increase one kelvin temperature the amount of heat required the joule that is entropy in bengali the jodi tumi kono system er tapmatra 1 kelvin briddhi korte chao jodi tumi kono system er tapmatra 1 kelvin briddhi korte chao then je poriman heat ba tap shokti tomar lagbe take amra ki bolbo entropy bolbo so the unit of the entropy is joule per kelvin but the enthalpy is the total heat it's not about related to temperature it's just the total heat of a system so that's why the unit of the enthalpy is j that means j from joule okay uh, so we know two things one is enthalpy the total heat of a system another one is entropy that is also a heat but the unit is joule per kelvin and we represent entropy by s we represent to enthalpy by h and we represent entropy by s these are just the representation name okay that's the representation name uh, then uh, we already know enthalpy and entropy then it is isentropic isentropic that means entropy and isen okay you know chemistry that isotope was the same number of you know uh, atomic mass isotope so isentropic that means isen means you know same number no change when you have the same number you know when you have the same number that means you don't have any change so isentropic that means if you if i divide ice and entropic entropic means heat so isen no change that means no change of entropy okay so these are the you know uh, some uh, special words that we need to understand that isentropic that means uh, it is related to entropy and i as it is known as isen that means um, it is no change <clears throat> it will remain same it will remain same isentropic then you can see isothermal thermal thermal is related to temperature okay thermal is related to temperature and iso is you know constant that means no change iso that means constant that means no change so you can see it is no change of temperature okay so isothermal similarly isobaric we all know bar is the unit of a pressure bar is a unit of pressure okay so iso is written in front of it so isobaric that means no change of pressure or constant pressure the pressure will not change from the previous to the next the pressure will remain same that's why it is written no change of pressure so these are the terms we need to know one is enthalpy that is total heat one is entropy that is also a heat but you know per kelvin temperature increase the amount of heat is required is entropy the isentropic that is no change of entropy isen the isothermal no change of temperature and the isobaric that is no change of pressure okay so these are the terms we need to uh, know in the future so now we will see uh, the th diagram of this water to steam th diagram means my student uh, the temperature and heat you already know that the t for t is the temperature and h that is enthalpy or total heat of a system okay we just learned that h is equals to enthalpy or the total heat of a system heat energy basically so now this diagram is the th diagram of water to steam that means uh, we convert 
from water and conversion of water to steam what are the changes of temperature and heat the relation of heat and temperature in which process the process is you have to convert from water to steam okay so that is the relation of th diagram of water to steam we already discussed there are three types of steam uh, i'm not sure that i have discussed it or not yes maybe there are three types of steam one is wet steam the first one is wet steam the second one is dry steam and the third one is the superheated steam okay the second one is the dry steam the third one is the superheated steam so there are three types of steam we know that probably steam is the just uh, the gaseous state of water but steam has also three kinds of there are three kinds of steam one is uh, wet steam another one is uh, the superheated steam and the middle one is the dry steam there are three types of steam so in this diagram we can look at the in this th diagram of water to steam we can look at the three steam region first of all think that we will convert from water to steam okay so we represent the x axis the x axis is heat or enthalpy heat or enthalpy uh, so that means if i go from this is the suppose this is the central point suppose so if i go from left to right if i go to in this direction that means the heat is increasing the heat is increasing and uh, if i go from uh, the y axis is basically temperature this scale is temperature the y is y axis so if i go to higher position the temperature is also increasing if i go to higher position the temperature is also increasing so first of all uh, my student um, suppose take a particular point this is the you know water point suppose this is take a point of one this point is the water point so what is water point that means it has a temperature suppose 60 or 70 degrees Celsius temperature of water you know so a certain amount of uh, water that has a temperature but definitely less than 100 degrees celsius okay mm, so after that if you continuously give, want to you know suppose this is the heat point now it has the heat in it so if you want increase the heat that means if you increase the heat we all know the when you give heat the temperature also increases the temperature also increases so if you increase the heat the temperature will also increase definitely so the temperature will also increase the heat is increasing so basically the change will be like this so which means both value are increasing you see that the temp heat is also increasing and the temperature is also increasing so at a certain time suppose the point two this point two this is the you know uh, margin of water and steam at point two you can see uh, that <clears throat> at point two the steam starts that means after that the temperature will not increase at point two the temperature will not increase i take one more color to make you understand better uh, this point two when it reaches at that time the temperature of the water will not increase so what happens then then the steam starts to you know generate then we starts to get steam and uh, we know that the steam basically at that time the water takes uh, the heat and it becomes latent heat you know it becomes latent heat to convert from the water to steam okay 
So this time the temperature, you know, is not increasing. But if I continuously give to heat, if I continuously give heat, at that time the water converts from, you know, water converts to steam. The water converts to steam and this steam this region is known as wet steam region this this region is basically known as wet steam region where you all know that uh, the water and steam both stays because after uh, reaching the temperature of 100 degrees celsius we know that if we if we continuously give heat we get steam from the you know upper side and the water starts to convert from water to steam phase so this is known as wet steam because it has the water particle inside it and it continuously you know if you want if you want to give more heat and the, if you get heat continuously the more water converts to steam so this region is basically known as wet steam region the total two to three point it is known as wet steam region because where water and steam both are available but when it reaches that point three when it reaches the point three so this is the marginal line of you know um, water steam water plus steam to steam that means after this after reaching the point three the whole amount of water the all amount of water has converted from water to steam that means if i take the five kg of water at point three all the water has converted to steam but remember the temperature is not changed the temperature at point three and uh, the temperature at point two you can see both the temperature are same the temperature at point two and the temperature at point three both are same so the temperature is not changed okay so at point three it is known as dry steam the dry saturation steam saturated steam why because here all the amount of water particle has converted to steam so that's why it is known as dry steam so point two to three this region is basically wet steam point two to three this region is basically wet steam but when all the water particles become uh, steam at point three and the temperature is also same uh, for the you know uh, same as the boiling point the point two this steam is known as dry steam and after that if i give more heat my student at that time the steam will capture those heat and we all know that uh, uh, heat you know increases the temperature so after this if i give more heat if i give more heat to theirs the temperature will also increase so you see that after sometimes we will get a certain amount of steam where the temperature is very high you know greater than 100 degrees celsius that steam we will call that steam we will call superheated steam that means when we you know superheated steam is also a dry steam superheated steam is also a dry steam but uh, it has no water particle but its temperature is very high greater than 100 degrees celsius or greater than the uh, temperature of the boiling point so in this way we can get you know three types of steam so basically the weight steam if i you know now make the summary that the weight steam is basically the, from the point two to up to point three this region where the steam has also water particles some water particles left or some water element left water and steam both but when it becomes the dry steam it does not have any kind of water particle 
that's why it is known as dry saturated steam after that if we continuously give more heat to this steam this is known as superheated steam so there are basically three types of steam and this diagram is also known as th diagram of water to steam remember there are two types of heat basically here you can see in this transition that one is known as sensible heat we will also study this in the next um, uh, class one is sensible heat one is latent heat one is sensible heat my student there are two types of heat basically one is sensible heat another one is latent heat okay so what is sensible heat and what is latent heat you can see my student here when from point one the water we give heat the temperature increases the temperature of this water increases but after that the water becomes water the water remains water so in this stage you can see the temperature is increasing the temperature is changing but the phase of the material that means water remains water so basically this heat is known as sensible heat because it changes your temperature but not the phase phase means your state there are three state we know that the you know solid state liquid and gaseous state so here the liquid state of you know water remains liquid so it, the sensible heat basically changes the temperature not the state of the material but from two to three if i see from two to three in this stage my student you can see the temperature is fixed the temperature is not changing at all the temperature is fixed but the state is changing the water is changing to steam the water is changing to steam that means uh, okay. yeah, liquid state to gaseous state liquid state to gaseous state that's why it is known as latent heat latent heat is also known as you know shupta tap in bengali it is shupta tap that means it the temperature is constant but the state of you know the state of material that means if it is liquid it converts to gaseous if it is solid it converts to liquid so this is known as latent heat similarly in the point three to four you can see the steam remains steam steam key steam it to say but the temperature is increasing what the temperature is increasing so this heat is known as sensible heat so there are two types of heat one is sensible heat and another one is latent heat so what is the difference the sensible heat changes the temperature and the latent heat changes the state that means uh, temperature does not change but ch what what changes it changes the liquid to gaseous or solid to liquid okay so it changes the temperature in bengali the sensible heat tolos are shape up jay taper karone podar thir tomar tap matra puri burton hoi kintu tomar obustar puri burton hoi na kirokom jama in ponte degree celsius tap matra panic is the maro tap day এটা তাপমাত্রা বেড়ে কি মনে করো 90 ডিগ্রি সেলসিয়াস হলো তাহলে দেখো এখানে কিন্তু তাপমাত্রা বাড়লো কিন্তু পানি কিন্তু পানিই আছে বাট আমি যদি 100 ডিগ্রি সেলসিয়াস তাপমাত্রার পানিকে যদি আরো তাপ দেই তাহলে এটা কি আস্তে আস্তে বাষ্প হওয়া শুরু হচ্ছে কিন্তু এই বাষ্পের তাপমাত্রা কিন্তু 100 ডিগ্রি 100 ডিগ্রি সেলসিয়াসই আছে তাপমাত্রার পরিবর্তন হয় না কিন্তু পদার্থের অবস্থার পরিবর্তন মানে কি যে স্যার পানি থেকে কি এটা বাষ্প হয়ে যাচ্ছে এই যে পদার্থের অবস্থার পরিবর্তন হচ্ছে এই হিটকে বলা হয় কি সুপ্ত তাপ বা লেটেন্ট হিট ঠিক আছে পদার্থের সুপ্ত তাপ সো দিস মাই স্টুডেন্ট দিস ইজ দা টোটাল টি এইচ ডায়াগ্রাম ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর ইউর এক্সাম অর এনি কাইন্ড অফ ইন আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ডিং ফর ফিউচার দা টি এইচ ডায়াগ্রাম দা টেম্পারেচার এন্ড হিট আর রিলেশনস বিটুইন ওয়াটার টু স্টিম ইউ ক্যান অলসো সি দা কনভার্টিং ওয়াটার ইনটু সুপার হিটেড স্টিম দা হোল জার্নি ইজ বেসিক্যালি ইউ কনভার্ট ফ্রম ওয়াটার আপ টু super heated steam and also you need to understand there are three types of steam one is wet steam one is dry steam and the another one is super heated steam so there are three types of steam okay 
So we already see this uh, this uh, diagram that means a schematic diagram of uh, uh, steam turbine. The schematic diagram of steam turbine. Here we all know that uh, in the boiler there are four parts. We know that this is boiler. Uh, this is the steam turbine. The third one is the condenser, and the fourth one is the pump. So th th there is a cycle going on in between. In these four things, there are cycle going on. So now uh, the, our main topic of this today's class was the Rankine cycle. The RC, that means the Rankine cycle. And we also discussed, so there are four main parameters of the uh, mechanical engineering. The P for pressure, V for volume, T for temperature, and S for heat. Okay, so we divide the two, PV, we will build the relation PV, and we will also build the relation TS, the temperature and heat. So pressure and volume, these two have the relation, and the temperature and the steam, these two will have also a relation. So th this is known as PV diagram, and this is known as TS diagram. So this PV and TS diagram together is known as a Rankine cycle. Okay, the PV diagram and TS diagram together known as Rankine cycle. We see these are the generic generic diagram. You might not find out fully, you know, uh, related, but these are these two are just the generic diagram. Just show you to the you know main activity of the pressure and volume. First of all, it is you know. Uh, the TS diagram, you can see here the TS diagram. That means uh, in this diagram, we will see the temperature and heat relation. So the temperature, we take temperature in the X, Y axis temperature and the X axis is heat. Okay, that means we know that uh, from, if I go from here to, uh, left to right, the heat is increasing. If I go to from down to up, the temperature is increasing. Okay, so the y axis is temperature and the x axis is heat. Okay, so first of all, my student, uh, this, this diagram is basically the activity of this force, four main components of steam power plant. One is boiler, one is turbine, and the, another third one is the condenser, and fourth one is the pump. So we start from boiler, okay? We start from boiler. What happens in the boiler, my student, if you remember, uh, in the boiler, in the boiler, we give water from pump to boiler, isn't it? We give water from pump to boiler. So those water, has a certain amount of temperature. Those amount of temperature, that means it might be 30, 40 or 50 degree or 60 degree Celsius temperature of water. Okay, so, so that 50 degree Celsius temperature water, we need to give heat. If we give heat, my student, remember, this diagram is very easy. You can easily memorize and draw. But please try to understand that why this diagram is just look like this. Okay, so that's why I, I, I'm explaining. So you will, uh, you know, you can draw this diagram very easily. Just draw twice and uh, it will be very easy for you. But try to understand why this diagram is looks like this. We are now discussing in the boiler, the two to three. Okay, the boiler, the boiler activation. So suppose the inside the boiler, the temperature of the water is 50 degrees Celsius. So we all know the boiler, we give heat, we give heat. So at that time, the temperature will increase. Suppose it becomes now 100 degrees Celsius, my student, 100 degrees Celsius. So at when it becomes 100 degrees Celsius, this is water. Okay, if I give more heat, my student, if I give more heat, then it will try to become steam slowly. It will try to become steam, okay? So when it becomes steam, when it becomes steam, 
this is hundred first of all it will become 100 degrees celsius steam remember this 100 degrees celsius i'm writing it is basically based on pressure always remember our the boiling point or the steam temperature is basically related to pressure if our pressure is one bar or one atm one atmospheric pressure at that time only the temperature of uh, you know water is 100 degrees celsius or the temperature of the steam is 100 degrees celsius if we increase this temperature or decrease this temper temperature uh, decrease this pressure the this value will also change the 100 degrees celsius value will also change we will see in the next class that how pressure affect the temperature how pressure affect the boiling point temperature so we'll discuss in the next class there is a steam particular table uh, you know so we'll discuss the next for just example we are taking 100 degrees celsius so first of all this 100 degrees celsius temperature will become steam after that if we give more heat my student this steam will become suppose 500 degrees celsius steam so that times it becomes superheated steam 500 degrees celsius steam so you can see that the, the you know the transition the 50 degrees celsius water becomes first 100 degrees celsius water the hundred then the 100 degrees celsius water becomes 100 degrees celsius steam after that if we give more heat this steam will become 500 degrees celsius steam so this is the operation basically happens in the boiler we give water and we get superheated steam we give water and we get superheated steam now if we see suppose this is the particular point two starting point two the first of all we give a heat to 50 to 100 degrees celsius that means giving heat is increasing this okay so you can see at that time the temperature is also increase if you give heat the 50 degrees celsius temperature is converts to 100 degrees celsius temperature okay so you can see this point this is to this point my student here the temperature is increased but after that if you give more heat the 100 degrees celsius of water becomes 100 degrees celsius steam you can see from this point to this point the temperature is not increasing my student the temperature is not increasing because if we in both the points are in the same perpendicular line of the temperature scale so the temperature is not increasing so till this point this is 100 degrees celsius steam the dry steam we just show this diagram we just show in the th diagram but after that if we give more heat that 100 degrees celsius steam becomes 500 degrees celsius steam so you can see that from this three to three prime point this is the superheated point there here you can see the temperature is also increased and heat is also increasing so this I, I remove everything that this boiler the operation basically happens two to three is you know you give a particular amount of uh, temperature water it first of all becomes you know boiling point temperature then it boils it starts to wet steam wet steam to dry steam then it becomes superheated steam so this is the boiler side and in this we are giving heat we are giving heat from the external so that's why you can see that the q223 the q is also you know heat q basically is the representation of heat giving heat from the outside so that's why you can see the q223 is entering the system So after that, my student, uh, then it is turbine. I'm explaining this first cycle very, you know, um, slowly so that you can understand. And uh, there are several uh, TAS diagram and uh, PV diagram in the coming lectures. So you can understand that uh, the relations, how it builds. Okay. So uh, the TAS diagram, next is turbine. We all know what happens in the turbine. In the turbine, we all know, my student, uh, the 
the hot steam and high pressure steam okay the, it heats the turbine and it, the rotational energy basically we get isn't it the rotational energy basically we get you also need to understand the turbine is an isentropic device isentropic device isentropic we studied the first uh, today the isentropic means no change of entropy isentropic no change of entropy no change of entropy that means my student no change of heat so when the no change of heat you can see this boiler the heat can enter from outside but when it is turbine the heat cannot go outside or the outside heat cannot enter this is totally you know not allowed in the turbine that's why it is known as isentropic process it is known as isentropic process because the change of heat suppose dq we represent d as a small amount of heat dq is zero the change of heat from uh, the turbine is zero because this is known as isentropic process so what does it means it means that your amount of heat whatever in the turbine available it will not go outside or the outside heat will not come inside so this is isentropic process remember so in this process you know uh, the heat will not change but we all know that my student uh, in the turbine the temperature and the pressure both becomes low that means the entering pressure and the outgoing pressure becomes low the entering temperature and the outgoing temperature are also not same so you can see the temperature will in this process the turbine the temperature will reduce the temperature will you know loss but the in the heat will not change because it is known as isentropic process so that's why i can see uh, from three to four the diagram is straight line why you can see uh, the diagram is a straight line uh, so you can see that the temperature at point three and the temperature at point four you can see a change the temperature is decreased till this point the temperature is decreased but you can see that the the entropy or the heat is not changed it is totally constant there is because it is the isentropic process okay so this is the isentropic process that means the entropy will not change the point 3 entropy and the point 4 entropy will remain same because there is a no heat exchange between turbine no heat uh, you know goes outside or no outside heat comes to the inside so that's why you see that my student the entropy value is not just at the fixed point at a fixed point okay after that the condenser my student after that the condenser you can see the condenser there is a straight line we can see there is a straight line there is a straight line why in the condenser my student uh, basically the temperature generally it is shown that the heat is decreasing the point of heat is four here okay and this is the one point the heat is decreased the heat is basically decreased because we all know that you know what is the task of condenser the condenser is basically removes the heat removes the heat and uh, it changes the state the steam becomes water in the condenser the steam becomes water okay so here you can see that the, the there is a heat release there is a heat release and it is also shown that the temperature also remains constant also remains constant but it is just shown in the generally 
generally it is shown that the temperature remains constant just to you know give a uniform uniformity in this diagram but temperature also increases we know that you know after after that uh, when we convert from uh, steam to water the temperature also increases because there are some system loss in everywhere so my student in the condensed side you can see from 4 to 1 there are some heat release because in in this heat release we know that the steam basically gives out the heat and uh, you know the steam basically gives out the heat and then it becomes water in the condenser it becomes water but after that finally from one to two you can see a straight line you can see a straight line this is for pump for one to two this is for the pump and we all know that um, here uh, in the pump there is you know uh, the increase of temperature there is increase of temperature because it is shown uh, because we know that uh, when uh, the pump uh, the water the line is goes from different you know different components just like economizer in economizer we all know there are some amount of heat absorbed by the water and the when the heat absorbed by the water the temperature also increases so that's why you can see that there is a some amount of uh, uh you know uh, temperature increase but there is very small amount of temperature increase um so that's why it is shown that the one to two there is a straight line of water okay so this is also an isentropic process this is also an isentropic process that means there cannot be no heat from the outside of the system the economizer heat is the inside heat okay the heat is inside heat but um, uh, there is a no heat from the outside of the system from the environment the heat there is a, a no external heat can enter the system of the pump so that's why you can see that there is a no heat exchange though you can say you can tell that the economizer are giving heat but those heat are inside the system heat the inside the system heat so they are uh, when they are representing this ts diagram they are not considering the inside heat system they are considering the external external heat okay so that's why you can see that there's a straight line and uh, as i already tell you this this position has some you know different opinions also and different uh, books there are some different opinions also that this cannot uh, you know this should not be a straight line but uh, in the more in the more uh, you know given reference uh, we found that uh, they, they give a straight line here just to re represent a uniformity of the ts diagram because uh, you also always see that uh, the inverse position here that it is the isentropic process so they also give this is an isentropic process and you are you can also see that in this position the boiler position the external heat uh, is in uh, you know entering the system but here the heat is outgoing the system so there is always an uniformity there is always the uniformity in the inverse position so that's why they have given but there are some serious level of discussion that this is line may not be a straight line but in the most of the cases they gave the straight line just to make the uniformity am i clear you can consider this as a straight line not a big deal so this is my uh, my student this is the ts diagram and uh, next the pv diagram i know that this uh, the whole discussions were going on are not so interesting but you know uh, we just need to know that how these diagrams are basically formed and originated and why these lines are you know the, in this way so we just need to you know uh, you know just give an idea give an idea of this type of diagram now if we discuss the pv diagram uh, uh, you can see my student uh, now we will go to build the relations between pressure and volume okay pressure and volume always remember my student the ideal gas equation is pv equals to or pv equivalent nrt 
PV equivalent minus student NRT. So here from here we can say that P is inversely proportional to V. That means my student remember P is inversely proportional to V. That means if pressure increase the volume will decrease. If pressure decrease the volume will increase. If the pressure will increase the volume will decrease so there are some inverse relation remember uh, just take a balloon take a balloon as an example if you give you know more pressure that means you know force by your hand if you give force by your hand so there are huge the pressure is increasing my student the pressure is increasing but you will see that the volume of this balloon will decrease so in this experiment you can easily you know keep in mind that the relations of pressure and volume that pressure if you increase the pressure the volume will decrease if you release the pressure the volume will increase so this is the inverse relation of pressure and volume so if we go from side that um, from the boiler suppose from two to three we start from the boiler we know that uh, my student uh in the boiler always remember that in the boiler the pressure is you know is required to be fixed there is a fixed amount of pressure because if we increase the or decrease the pressure or the pressure varies if, you, if the pressure changes you know from time to time uh the bo boiling point also change so uh, pressure has a huge impact on boiling temperature okay so that's why the pressure is always fixed in the boiler the pressure is fixed but remember when uh, we get uh, you know we give heat and the boiler water becomes steam the volume becomes much more the volume increases from liquid to gaseous when it uh, we convert from liquid to gaseous the volume becomes bigger so you can see from two to three my student from two to three you can see there is a no pressure change the pressure is fixed from two to three there is no pressure change the pressure is fixed but you can see the volume because we take pressure in the x x y axis and the volume in the x axis so the volume is increased you can see the volume is increased but the pressure is fixed in the boiler so this is the condition of the boiler in the turbine my student in the turbine the high pressure goes the high pressure goes and the low pressure of steam comes that means pressure decreases in the turbine pressure decreases and those pressure are basically used to convert rotational energy of the turbine okay so when the pressure decreases we know that the p is you know inversely proportional to v so if the pressure is decreasing the volume will increase the volume will increase so you can see that suppose uh, from this point it looks like this that means this is the point three volume this is the point four, uh, four volume so you can see that the volume has been increased. The volume has been increased, but if I take the pressure of the three, and if I take the pressure of four, you can see there are some decrease in pressure. There are some decrease in pressure. So in the turbine, the pressure increases, sorry, the pressure decreases. The pressure decreases, the high pressure steam goes and the low pressure steam you know flows outside the turbine so the pressure decreases so we can say the volume is also increasing it is known as expansion it is known as isentropic expansion and that's it uh, then after the condenser we know that in the condenser uh, you can see there is a you know uh, volume is decreasing and the pressure remains constant because uh, here uh, it is the inverse process you can see because in the condenser uh, when it comes, uh, it is a steam, but when it, uh, you know, becomes water, we know that when it converts from water to steam, the volume increases 
but it is a reverse process the steam to water that means the volume is okay the volume is decreasing because now the steam is converting to water so the condenser and the also the pressure remains constant this is known as constant pressure process in this two way the constant pressure process so the pressure remains constant but the volume is decreasing okay because uh, the we convert steam to water and the finally uh, we know that uh, it is pump from 1 to 2 it is the pump and we know that the what what thing pump happens the low pressure comes inside the pump and the high pressure goes okay the low pressure comes inside the pump and the pump creates high pressure and there is nothing related to volume of uh, pressure the volume the pump can pump do not change the volume the pump only one thing he does he increases the pressure so you can see the 1 to 2 the 1 to 2 basically the pressure is increasing you can see that the pressure is increasing the volume is fixed okay so in 1 to 2 the pump only the pressure is increasing the volume is remains fixed so in this way my student the pv diagram is looks like a little bit easier than the ts diagram the boiler turbine condenser and what and the pump these are the general representation also in the ts diagram also these are some general representation and the ranking the scientist ranking tried to uh, give us an uniform relation between these four main parameters the temperature and heat there are some you know um, some doubts there are some different opinions from the others but uh, these these two diagrams or these two concept the ranking cycle rs uh, pv and ts diagram are almost you know uh, accepted by you know the whole world so there there might be some you know uh, discussions uh, different discussions in some parts but uh, the ranking try to give a uniformity and just try to show us the uh, relations of pressure and volume uh, just representing the, this two diagram this is known as pv diagram my student and the first diagram is known as ts diagram so i will request all of my students try to uh, understand this diagram and whatever i have given the explanation i have given the explanation one by one very slowly you listen one more time and make your own notes i haven't given any kind of notes here i have just explained this diagram so make your own notes so in exam if this question comes you it is not you know first of all you have to draw this diagram this is schematic diagram you have to draw then you have to draw this pv and ts diagram and also besides this you have to give some explanation that means step by step your small brief you know point point out explanation by yourself okay so that's it for today's class my student um, this uh, this today's class is totally based on this main three diagrams and also related to uh, the four or five uh, main you know terms the enthalpy the entropy the isentropic the isothermal and the isobaric so always also read those inshallah from the next class uh, we will uh, start you know some other topics also so that's it for today my student uh, please everyone give your role in the chat box and do you have any questions you can ask me everyone please give your role in the chat box I'm taking your role, day 27 batch, date is 2021, 12021. Please everyone give your role in the chat box. I got only five rows, 23, row 7, row 33, row 19, row 28. Is there anyone else? My student? 27 sir 27 26 26 35 35 uh, 28 maybe he already given yeah, 28 already given. Uh, already given. yes sir. Also, uh, 37, sir. 37 there are 10 students 
there was 10 students what is muhammad murasi what is your role 23 sir you already given you already given up 33 has given role 27 has given uh maruf is 35 i have given ibrahim is 19 i have given but there was only one more student it was 37 sir Yeah, 37 I have taken, but only nine students. There was 10 students available at a particular time. Sir, to, uh, 26. Yeah, I have taken 26. 17. 17. Who is 17? Mm-hmm. Is there anyone? 17? My student? Maybe he, he locked out now, no, sir. Maybe. What's, your, what's his role? 70, sir. Sure? Yes, sir. Sadiq, 70. Okay. Sadiq. Okay, uh, we are seven. not a student, sir. You are a teacher. Okay. Okay, that's it, my student, for today. Uh, do you sir. have any questions you can ask?